Welcome back, it is Thursday and that means acting analysis for animators and today I'm going to take a look at the movie Vice. So today's clips are going to cover contrast in posing when someone moves a lot, doesn't move a lot, eye blinks, usage with props, you know my love of props, so lots of things to cover, so let's go straight to the clips. First one we have here is an argument between these two main characters and a couple things to look at. There are a lot of little things here too. So first, I love this. That little moment of putting his lips together and squishing this. It's kind of a gesture of shame. You can see this. There are some photos floating around of people. It's usually people caught doing bad things. And I like that in there, consciously or not. It's kind of an interesting gesture. So she goes on and tells him, you gotta get your life together because all that stuff reminds him of past moments when she was witnessing her parents falling apart. And I like that thing of that character is her younger looking at this. And when we cut to this, she is also looking here as if it's been happening. It's a small little thing, but I like that little edit and that little uh, eye direction. But anyway, she gets back to him and this is interesting. Not that a fly is potentially a prop, but if you look at that fly on his face and he's not moving, He's probably hung over, beaten up, he's just tired and doesn't know what to do. But you can technically say, well, if there is a fly going around your face and you're not moving, this could be that your character is so exhausted and tired that they don't care. Or they're so angry that they're just focused and whatever is on their face doesn't even phase them. So you could use something like this and this could be a fly, maybe there's something flying into their face, could be wind, could be rain or people who can maybe cover their eyes or cover their face and they don't really care about the harsh outside elements and that could be an additional indicator of what the character feels or what they feel towards another person. So continuing on, she tells him, after all this time, you gotta find a way to get your stuff together. So continues with all those traumatizing memories and she tells her, okay, this is it. You gotta do this, you gotta make a choice. And one of the main reasons why I'm showing you this sequence is his reaction. So she says, you gotta get your stuff together and he then has a reaction by just doing this. And I love that. It's not a big explosion in his face saying something, there's no audio, it's just technically in animation terms, you're just gonna rotate up with a little bit of obviously side to side, some of the complexity, so it's not just one axis. But I like this, it's just a simple thing of, yes, I have changed my ways, I am now making a decision, this is the time, and it's all through a simple, move up with the head. Just like when I had a clip way, way back of um, True Blood, where the grandmother of Suki says, I can count on you, isn't that right? And it's not, isn't that right? It's not a question by going, isn't that right? By lifting the head, it's a command. It's not a question anymore. And I love that stuff. It doesn't always have to be crazy arm gestures. Sometimes just a simple tilt in the face or there's something in Illusionist I wanna do in the future where another main character yells at the other main character and instead of her matching that outrage and yell and, and confrontation, she just does a little bit of a, so the head to like, oh, you poor thing, you don't understand anything. And it's such a great moment of contrast in that scene. But in general, I would encourage you to find moments where as a character, you don't rely on arms and you don't do any big wild gestures unless it's really called for. But sometimes less is more and sometimes just doing a bit of a change or to whatever you wanna do, right? Something like that, I'm just a big fan. So next up is this little thing here where he is finally in this beautiful building lights and paintings and nice and colors. And I love this too. This is not something you can technically do in terms of you know acting choices and stuff, but I like this. I like that it's dark. We don't know what's going on. As the audience, you wonder what is going to happen. And then you got the boom reveal. Oh, okay. Totally change of color where this is warmer and more inviting. This is uh, icky and, and just, you know, sickly green, but it is his first office and he's happy about this. And the reason why I'm showing you this are his finger moves right there. All of that, I love all that stuff. It's his desk. You might argue this is not nice. And also like the framing that we're looking inside, which also covers more of his office. It makes it even smaller. It's just, it reinforces the, the crappiness of his office. But if you look at him, how he does that little of, yeah, cool, sturdy, yeah, mm, nice, yes, I like this. Obviously it's helped by his, his expression that he's not crying or anything, like he's happy and you know, he goes straight to work. But I love this. I love that that little thing. And it's not much. It's a tiny thing of bum bum and that. And again, it's something that you would not be able to do if your character was in an empty environment. So props, again, use them to your advantage to show how a character feels 
or so that we learn something more about the character. It's not just to add props because you don't want an empty scene. There are many, many acting shots where the character is in an empty room and they're great. They're great tests, animation is great. Totally fine for demo reels, it's awesome. At the same time, why not? If you have props and you have good ideas, it might help you come up with different ideas and make something a bit more original or something a bit more creative with your um, character and your acting choices. And staying in this room, it's a, it's a bit later in the movie, and staying in this room, he is still in there. He had his phone call on this, his little thing here. When he goes back, watch how he hits the wall and oh, 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 and all of that. That little gesture here, that little moment, not as a gesture, but just that little change, that, trying to hold on again. He's still happy, but it's still slightly awkward, right? He's not completely at ease. But again, it's usage of a chair, table, and a wall to do something like this, which actually reminds me of the shot in a simple favor. There's a very similar moment where someone sits down and wants to lean back and the wall is too far and then it kind of shows the clumsiness uh, link somewhere up here to a simple favor. So watch that for something very similar to that. Next up is a conversation between these two characters and I like the contrast. Again, he's very loose, does a lot with his hands, bobble with the head, licking of fingers. There's a lot of movement there and he's just much more relaxed versus you got the very Rigid, all right, I got one more thing. And it's kind of interesting editing too, that here's the bait, the bait for the character. But anyway, you know, disagree or agree with the topic or the movie, whatever, but I want to look at this where it's very steadfast and he has that, bam, it's almost like I'm ready to punch you. Not that he is, but I mean, it's just very, so rock solid in a way, he's not wavering. And there are a lot of looks, even if he changes the head orientation, it's just always a straight look, not that many blinks and reinforces kind of the clumsiness of the character, again, for contrast. But look at this, it's constantly like this. And what I like about that is that you can continue this with other gestures. So as he says, go on and tell me more things, you can see how he just observes and studies him there. No blinks. What is he going to say? And realizes, all right. And I like this here. That's his little anticipation before he continues. All right. So I got one more thing to say. And again, he continues, oh yeah, tell me more, tell me more. And you can see this much looser with the gestures and just the way he leans and then keeps on eating. <laughs> it just makes me hungry actually. And then I like this here. This is moment where, all right, well, I got some other things to tell you and there's a list of things. And I'll look at even the economy of gestures, right? Just a little bit of a bloop and then back. It's very measured. And then you have this. Watch how he does this with his hand on table. One, two, three, four. It's like, okay, well, I got an idea for this, 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 and this. And it's very, it's very rigid. And I don't know if it's methodical, but it's very, all right, I got this and that, 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 that. He's very proper. And then it's not like, oh, well, we could do this. We could do that. So it's a very specific way of, not that he's acting out the words. Like you want to be careful that you don't go, well, I got one idea. Well, now I got two ideas. You got to be careful about that. But there's always a time and place for that. But I like that. It's very, hmm, 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 hmm. So if you add arm gestures, not saying you should never use any gestures, be mindful of, well, how? And is the gesture fitting the character? Is the character loose and tired or excited or angry or tense? Then make sure that those gestures really supplement and, and help reinforce the current mood of the character or whatever emotion the character has at that point. And last up, speaking of pose, I love this here. So he has this, he's trying to show something to his granddaughters. This is the daughter, this is the father. Uh, you might argue not very appropriate at a funeral. So she goes, all right, well, this is not the right place. And he's very clumsy. He was always kind of drunk. He's not a good character in the movie. And then you have him coming in. And then at this point, he's much more comfortable. He's much more, uh, I won't say arrogant, but he's much more confident. And at this point, he's much more confident coming in. You can see this with the slow walk and kind of, all right, well, it's time to go. And I'm going to tell him what's going on. And what I love here is this. A, it's already in the framing, just the... I'm taller than you, not that he looks down, he actually doesn't really acknowledge him, doesn't look at him, but it's already the contrast of the change of status, the differences of status, I mean, that kind of helps, even if that character were, if they were the same height, you can put someone on Apple box and put him higher, but you know, for you and mine, just, just cheat the height, obviously, right? But that's already interesting. But what I love is this, right? He just tells him later on, like, don't go near my family, but it's just this long stare and he realizes, all right, well, there's nothing I can do here. And I love this. He has that slight lean forward, right? It's almost like I am somewhat threatening you, but not completely. My arms are still, my hands are still in the pockets, but I still, I'm steadfast. I'm not moving, I'm not wavering, but I'm still leaning towards you. I'm slightly confrontational. And you can see 
the way you know the suit falls it was nice and clean versus you got lots of lines the pants don't really fit well the jacket here is unbuttoned and you got his arms out it's just all kind of uh uh <laughs> and i love that i love that contrast and actually you can see here they're not they're kind of similar in height so maybe the other shot was slightly cheated but i love this i love that on a wide shot this is all body posture so when you do something, be mindful that if you do a close-up, then think about the subtleties of the face. But if you do a wider shot where you see the full body, maybe you spend less time on the face, but it's all about the body pose and the body language. And maybe if you know the character, how will they be different if you look at them and you freeze frame? Oh, this is the pose, this is the pose. I know exactly how he feels and how she feels and how it was their relationship. So think about that in terms of how far are the characters away from your camera and use that to your advantage and then push the poses, push the pose in the body or push the pose in the face. Boom, that's it for Vice. Lots of things, lots of interesting acting and also editing parts in this movie. So if you haven't seen this and maybe you've seen this already and you got some comments, as always comments are open. Let me know what you thought about any of this. If you've watched this whole thing till the very end, as always, thank you so much for your patience and for your time. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? I do a lot of things almost every day. So if you wanna get notified, hit that bell button as well. And if you feel like all of this is helpful and you wanna apply this to your shots and you want more help, I do have workshops. Sign up for my workshops if you want to and I can help you with your animation shots. And that's it for now. I will see you tomorrow again on this channel.